Latvian national heritage landscape represents the extraordinary triumph of the traditional owners of the land, the Gunjumara people, in having this place recognised as a place of human technology, resourcefulness, a place of spirit and as a place of resistance. Bajman today, commonly known as Mount Essels, is located in southwestern Victoria, approximately 140 kilometres away from Melbourne, Victoria. In this landscape, more than 30,000 years ago, the Ganjumara witnessed an eruption of a volcano, which is Bajman now. Because of the spiritual connection Aboriginal people have with the land, the Ganjumara tribe interpreted the eruption of Bajman as an ancestor revealing itself through the landscape. As Bajpin erupted, the source of an immense lava flow transformed the landscape. The lava flow was approximately 8 kilometers wide and 18 kilometers in length. The lava flow dammed pre-existing valleys to form extensive swamps and lakes including Lake Conda, a low-lying swampy area approximately 1 kilometer in width and 4 kilometers long which is surrounded by a volcanic landscape of bare basalt outcorp known as the Stony Rise. The Ganjumara people developed one of the oldest man-made agriculture systems. They did this by altering the landscape, by digging channels, creating ponds and wetlands. Evidence suggests that alteration of the aquaculture system began 6,600 years ago by the removal of basalt bedrock blocks. Modification of the aquaculture system was done 600 to 800 years ago by the construction of a channel rock wall. The aquaculture system that the Ganjumara people constructed were graded ponds and a series of canals that were made out of lava flow that ensured a sturdy structure that has lasted for thousands of years. These canals ran for approximately 35 kilometers around Lake Conda and they served as eel traps for the Gunjumara people. By building this trap, the Gunjumara people were able to manipulate the ecosystem. This was done by manipulating water levels, which encouraged eels to swim into holding ponds. In these holding ponds, funnel-shaped baskets were placed. These funnel-shaped baskets were called Ganaraban. They were woven from smooth strap-shaped leaves. The most common grass species that were used for the baskets were speargrass, spiny-headed mat rush, and common reed. The leaves were gathered in bundles, soaked to make the fibres pliable in order for them to be woven into eel baskets. In order to ensure that the baby eels wouldn't be trapped, the baskets were placed at the spillway between ponds to ensure that smaller eels would slip through. However, if the baby eels did find themselves in the basket, the baskets had a small hole at the end which forced the baby eels and the fully grown eels to swim through in order to enter the holding pond. This ensured that the eels wouldn't swim back. This allowed the baby eels to be released into specific ponds which allowed them to grow more and to be caught at a later time. However, the fully grown eels would be trapped in the holding ponds and later on be speared by Gunjumara tribe members. This method was able to maintain a sustainable eel population that allowed the Gunjumara people to farm large quantities of eel year after year. Not only did the manipulated ecosystem encourage eels to swim into the holding ponds, the altered ecosystem increased the production of other fish species and plant species in the aquaculture system, some which are the tupong fish and blackfish, while plant species such as yam daisy, yellow lilies, chocolate lilies, green orchids were utilised for consumption, while grass tree, wattle, ponyard grass, and native hemp were used for creating baskets and tools that were used mainly for hunting purposes. Because of the constant large supply of food meant that the Gunjumara people didn't have to move around. Instead of following the nomadic lifestyle that is associated with Aboriginal culture, the Gunjumara people remained in one place. The Gunjumara built stone houses 
The structure looked C-shaped, was 3 to 4 meters in diameter, with 3 to 5 tiers of stones, forming low walls that supported a waterproof dome roof. The stone houses provided living quarters for families, storage for food, eel baskets, tools, spears and other hunting instruments. These stone houses were clustered in permanent villages that were spread across the Bunjabin landscape. In the year of 1834, the first European settlers arrived in the area. Due to the annexation of traditional Aboriginal lands, in the case of Bajbin, the land was seized for grazing. Because of this, there was large tension between the settlers and Gunjamara people that resulted into extreme brutality towards the Gunjamara people. This brutality is also known as the Umarela War that lasted for many decades. Because the Gunjumara people refused to leave, the Victorian government at that time established a mission in close proximity to Lake Conda. The mission prohibited the Gunjumara people to speak their traditional language or practice their culture, which included the teaching of weaving Gnarabaran and the use of Iwu aquaculture systems. The mission closed in the year of 1918 and in 1951 the Victorian government had nearly all the Bajbin land to the Soldier Settlement Commission where the land was leased or sold to World War II white Australian soldiers. In the year of 1875, in order to increase the land availability for grazing, drainage of Lake Conda and the surrounding wetlands began. However, in 1954, the main drain through Lake Honda was deepened, which destroyed Lake Honda and the wetlands, in turn destroying aquatic habitats. It also rendered the eel traps to the state of inoperable. In 1981, the High Court of Australia recognised that the Gunjumara people had special interest of the Bajbin landscape under the Archaeological and Aboriginal Relics Preservation Act. In 1996, the Gunjumara people lodged a land claim under the Native Title Act and in 2007, native title rights for 133,000 hectares of vacant crown land that included the Bajbin landscape and Lake Conda was awarded to the Gunjumara people and were appointed as land holder to manage the land in accordance with Gunjumara law, custom and beliefs. In recent years, the restoration of Lake Conda, wetlands and the aquaculture system that served as an eel trap are going through a restoration process. In 2004, the Australian government included Bajbin on Australia's national heritage list. Furthermore, the, the federal government nominated Bajbin landscape to be included on Australia's World Heritage Tentative List. If so, the Bajbin landscape will be the first World Heritage Site solely listed for Aboriginal cultural values. With the restoration of the site, water again will flow into Lake Conda and the wetlands. Plants and animals will return to the site and so will the cultural practice of the Gunjumara people. Where tradition and knowledge in eel harvesting through the use of the eel trap system will be taught to the next generation in hopes the knowledge and the customs would be passed down and never to be lost again. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.